Hello, dear viewers. You're watching Every TV English News Broadcast with me, Bersaba Tahle. These are the major headlines for today. Capacity upgrading training provided to teachers in Haga subzone. Training to members of Tourism Service Provision Association in Gashbarka region. Russia says it may cut oil output up to 7% over price cap. And power cuts and travel misery in U.S. and Canada amid freezing winter storm. On your local reports, capacity upgrading training was organized to over 300 teachers in Haga subzone from 5 to 24 December. The three-week training that was organized in Kermet, Begu, Glas and Ashera included planning and execution, class and students management, teaching modality and activity assessment, ethics, as well as role of stakeholders in the development of teaching learning process. Indicating that the training will have significant contribution in the development of capacity of education and teachers, Mr. Idris Abdu, head of education office in the subzone, commended the organizers of the training. Noting that the training they were provided will have significant contribution in upgrading their capacity, the teachers expressed readiness to play due part in the development of teaching learning process. According to document of the branch office, student school enrollment has increased by 10% and the number of students has reached to over 13,000. In Haggad subzone, there are 37 schools ranging from kindergarten to high school. Training has been organized to 192 members of the Tourism Service Provision Association in Gashbarka region, focusing on ensuring timely and efficient service. The training included accommodation of customers, efficient and timely service, and cleanliness of the institutions, as well as importance of grouping in association. At the conclusion event of the training, Colonel Hamid Yosef, Director of Tourism in the region, called on the trainees to apply the training they were provided in the development of tourism sector. The participants of the training on their part, commending for organizing the training, called for legal measures to tourism service provision institutions that practice contrary to the tradition and culture of the society. It is to be recalled that the ministries of tourism and health branches in the Gashbarka region have jointly organized seminar to workers of social service provision institutions focusing on controlling communicable diseases as well as on the significance of environmental sanitation and the daily activities of the social service provision institutions. On your last local report, the National Union of Eritrean Youth and Students provided training to 98 junior and high school students, including 60 females in our Urdu subzone, on social science aimed at developing their overall understanding. Mr. Meron Gabrahiwet, head of the National Union of Eritrean Youth and Students branch in the subzone, said that the objective of the training was to equip the students with necessary vocational skills alongside their regular education and enable them play their part in nation-building process. Mr. Meron further called on the trainees to take advantage of the training they were provided in improving their livelihoods and play due role in the implementation of the programs of the union branch. Indicating that the government and the front are earnestly working by providing priority to issues of the use, Mr. Issa Turum, administrator of the subzone, called on the trainees to practically apply the training they received. At the event, awards were provided to outstanding students that scored high points at the 2021 and 2022 eighth grade national examination. Coming up will be international news, dear viewers, after the short break. Welcome back. Deputy Prime Minister Alexander Novak told State Television on Friday that Russia has cut oil output by 5 to 7 percent in early 2023 as it responds to price caps on its crude and refined products and holds sales to the countries that support them. Detailing for the first time the Russian response to the price caps introduced by the Western over Moscow's invasion of Ukraine, Novak said the cuts could reach 500,000 to 700,000 barrels per day. He also said that despite Europe's effort to cut reliance 
reliance on Russian oil and gas. Energy exports from Russia are in demand worldwide, and Moscow has been diversifying its buyers. Novak said it would be difficult to provide for global economic development without Russian energy, and predicted possible gas shortages in Europe, which has introduced restrictions on gases as well as on oil. On today's last report, more than a million people in the U.S. are in the dark after a bomb cyclone winter storm struck the country, closing highways, grounding flights, and causing misery for Christmas travelers. Heavy snow, howling winds, and air so frigid, it instantly turned boiling water into ice, took hold of much of the country, including normally temperate southern states. More than 200 million Americans were under weather warnings as wind chills sent temperatures down as low as minus 48 degrees centigrade. This is according to the National Weather Service. According to further reports, the biting cold is an immediate concern for hundreds of thousands of electricity customers consumers who were without power. Transport departments in North and South Dakota, Oklahoma, Iowa, and elsewhere reported near zero visibility, whiteouts, ice-covered roads, and blizzard conditions, and strongly urged residents to stay home. About 5,000 U.S. flights were also canceled on Friday, and another 7,600 delayed, many of which at international hubs in New York, Seattle, and Chicago. You're still watching every TV reviewers and now recap of today's major headlines. Capacity upgrading training provided to teachers in Haga subzone. Training to members of Tourism Service Provision Association in Gashwarka region. Russia says it may cut oil output up to 7% over price cap. And power cuts and travel misery in U.S. and Canada amid freezing winter storm. The viewers, that was it for today. Thanks for watching.